uh, to have you. I know it's hard to speak before the lunch, but uh, we are all remote, so at some point some people can lunch and learn. Hello, Stein, how are you? Hey, hello, I'm doing fine. I hope actually that everyone will bring their sandwich behind the computer, so then. Yeah, lunch and learn with Stan Banier from Air France Cargo, right? Normally, normally, I would be stressed now if I was in a venue that everyone would like to uh, would like to to go for lunch and so on. But uh, yeah. but now it's okay. We we were watching your slide, but it seems they disappeared. Yeah, so I give it another try. So I think it works out now. Yeah, that works. And thank you for sharing uh, these five steps to fail your digital transformation. But uh, I'm sure because of your experience, I'm sure you hope how to actually not fail. But yeah, let's see. Let's see how, how that goes. Thank you, Stan. Exactly. You already gave away my uh, my end uh, presentation. No worries, uh, Maddie. Thanks for that. And also very interesting to see all the other uh, presenters uh, this morning. And I think indeed have quite a few from the airline industry. So that's cool to see that we are uh, all working from different angles towards uh, a digital transformation. Uh, so I'm Stein. I uh, work for Air France KLM Martinair Cargo. Uh, last year I also presented, uh, actually on stage, um, and uh, over there uh, I was presenting our digital transformation, actually on the passenger side. And now I'm working for the cargo uh, from a cargo perspective in our beautiful company. Um, so to start off, eh, so we uh, this is I think I think a view that many people missed for the past few months, and that is uh, something to to long for, uh, to dream of, uh, and let's see actually uh, how fast we can pick this up again. Eh? It, it would be really good if we uh, for our company, but I think also for everyone who is uh, eager to travel again, that we can step in a plane in a normal way again uh, next year soon. Um, of course, I, as, as I mentioned, I talked about uh, digital transformation at Air France KLM one year ago uh, at API Days Paris. And, and you might all know that, that from Air France and KLM perspective, uh, there is quite already some digital tooling, social media, uh, websites, etc., uh, available. And the digital transformation on the passenger side actually took already its flight for the past uh, 10, 15 years. And, 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 um, when I look around in our company, I see, of course, different paces, also based on the industry that we are working in. So taking uh, cargo into account, we see that uh, both for, for cargo in general, logistics maybe even, but also air cargo, the, the whole uh, industry is still at the, the verge of digital transformation as we speak. And I see also a lot of uh, different uh, uh, elements within our company that, that are still struggling to digitize, to get into that new uh, mode uh, way of working. So that's also why I would like to present these five steps to failure to digital transformation, because we have quite some experience uh, within our company and also within Cargo, where we can see what are the elements where we should focus on and what are these more from a business side uh, perspective, uh, uh, things to think of when you are starting or even within your digital transformation. So last year, I also showed uh, this video where um, you see that someone is trying to change something within your within a booking. Uh, and, and it's not only on passenger side that we have these beautiful legacy systems. I can also tell uh, since uh, half a year that I work for the cargo uh, domain in our company, that within cargo we have lots of beautiful legacy systems and all kinds of old-fashioned ways of doing our business. And uh, it's come, it should not come as a surprise that also within cargo uh, there are some really strange and old-fashioned ways of doing our business, as I mentioned. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, this is not from our company, luckily, but this is an, an example of a a race overview and uh, until a few years ago it was very normal to call the customer service when you wanted to make a booking and someone was looking up in such an overview uh, what would be your price when you would uh, bring some cargo from one end of the world to the other end and of course we have been digitizing a lot already and we can still uh, start from there and i would like to share a few of our experiences there of what we have been doing for the past few years so in doing so, I thought of let's do it in a different way and not just uh, look on how good we are or how we do the innovation part, but more like what are the elements that people tend to forget or what is the, 
what are the points where you can actually fail your digital transformation? So five points there, and I'd like to start with the first one, and that's actually to ignore your customer. Very uh, obvious one, of course. Huh? So, so on the one hand, we can see um, how important customers are, but what often happens in a company is that either the customer is ignored, we have all kinds of gut feelings, we think, well, we know better, we, I've worked in this company for 20 years, uh, we've always have talked with, uh, with those people, Let's uh, let's just do it the way we think is best. Another thing is, of course, when you start listening to your customers, that you only just pick a few. Uh, we we in our company we sometimes call it the friends of the family, and they always have the same complaints or their their own personal issues, and you're only listening to one customer. And so it's a it's a generic element where people think they know they're right, and and just start building tools or solutions or applications for those fictive customers or that one customer they once ever talked with and so ignoring a customer is is can happen in a few ways and not just the customer in general but also by ignoring parts of the customers and it's very important to build uh, on different customer segmentations find the right channels how to contact them uh, and offer the right tooling for all the customers that you have so of course what is the goal there we want to make sure that the customer gets what he wants at, uh, at the right place, at the right time. Um, and and, and we ensure actually that the experience the customer has is the best one ever. And of course, it, it has a combination of elements there. It's not just what the customer wants. Eh? We also have to take into account the business impact. Eh? The, the, the customer wish should not be leading there. Uh, when when um, talking to customers in a in a in a in a, in a Nike or Adidas uh, store, uh, the customer wish might be to find cheaper shoes. Well, those premium brands will say, then you should not come over here. Uh, we will keep the same uh, price. Uh, it's not only the business impact; it's also the brand that you want to, to uh, the image of the brand that you want to have, etc. So it's a combination of customer wish, business impact, all the different processes are there, but also of course technical feasibility. How easy is it to build something or to make something or to solve something? And that, that combination of things led for our company actually to building our own direct online platform. And it was called My Cargo. So our customers, which in the cargo world are the freight forwarders, think of uh, Bolloré, DHL, DSV, uh, Panalpina. Those customers are the people that want to book uh, their cargo directly in our systems and not just call to the customer service. They want to see where their, their, where their shipments are, so via track and trace. They want to file claims. They want to uh, see the rates, uh, the station capabilities of the different airports, uh, which products do we offer where, etc. And with my cargo, we could solve that pro uh, problem. Eh? We could give them a direct uh, connection to our systems and they could do everything themselves and direct uh, and, and self-service which for the, uh, the cargo industry was quite new. Uh, only five years ago, we launched this tool and we were actually one of the first uh, to, to give this direct access, this, this self-service possibility to our customers. So there you already see compared to the passenger world uh, in cargo, uh, things are quite slow on a few topics. And of course, uh, with my cargo, we could ensure that we could give the right information, the right time, the right place. Of course, it's not only starting with that one channel where you can do the direct uh, solution and because what are these solutions that you are building? So another step to fill your transformation is of course to wait for intricate solutions. We have a tendency in the IT world, I think, to, to build beautiful architectures and everyone can say something about that. Many architects, many developers, engineers, etc., And then you get the most beautiful pictures of how things should work in the end. But it will take a long time and it can also, uh, people also tend to go back to the project uh, uh, management's uh, way of thinking. Eh? So it's not the, the agile mindset of doing th things really fast and on a short term, but more like the old waterfall idea. And I have to say my, myself, I also fell for it sometimes. So waiting for these intricate solutions makes you, way, makes you also that you are actually uh, falling short on, on many things. So how does that work for us? We have also all kinds of uh, very elaborate processes, actually difficult processes, processes we don't want to bother our customers with. And so it's a matter of aligning these processes and making them very clear cut, making sure that they're very easy to understand, 
um, make sure that uh, the customers that are new to us, uh, that they can easily book their own cargo, for example, or find their shipments with, with the track and trace and not bother them with all kinds of hard questions they don't know. Of course, the more experienced uh, customers, they just know which product code to use, which elements to choose, etc. But very important there, uh, build, uh, simplify these processes in such a way that you can actually, as a customer, also understand them. For example, in our company uh, for cargo, the quote and book process, where you get the price for your cargo and also book it. It's not just uh, selecting the origin and destination and your date and then clicking, okay, I'm bringing 500 kilo. No, we have quite some steps there. So we, we make sure that this process was, cl was cleaned up very much and also in very simple steps. So you select your origin and destination and the date uh, where and when to fly. The next step is that you have to select which product or goods you are bringing. And we, we have a certain selector there to make sure that we know what are the elements that you're bringing. Also within cargo, uh, there are quite some restrictions, all kinds of rules, etc., to make to take into account. Then you bring in the details. Uh, it's not uh, not just which which kind of product you're bringing. We also need to know the size, the weight, etc. Then there are some compliance questions to avoid that you're bringing dangerous goods. And then you can select your flights and price. So it's, it's, it's already five steps in, in the process where with every step, the, the answer of that could influence your next step, actually. So it's good for us to, to get that process very clean. And then at the end, you can make the booking. Um, and with that booking, you actually go to the next step where you can track your shipment as soon as it's, uh, it's, uh, it's en route. Um, very important for us is that that process is it's actually from a business perspective we have that process in place because all these steps have their own influence on the next step and maybe even on the previous step so to get that process very well done we make sure that we get that uh, built into an api with because the, the conversational apis that we built they um they make sure that, uh, that that via that process, we, we get actually the interaction with the customer going on. And via the API, they get the request, response, et cetera. And of course, via the API, we also make sure that um, from, the, from the beginning to the end, uh, we can control that process. And when something changes, for example, with regards to compliance or with regards to the details we need, we can just change it in the API and all the different channels that are consuming that API can, uh, will be adjusted. So taking that into account, we built also our customer journey. And in that customer journey, we have several steps. We identify diff different steps. So we have the pre-sales where we are showing uh, the capabilities we have, the different products we, we sell, um, the different rates uh, and schedules we have. Of course, in the sales, pro uh, sales st step itself of the customer journey, we have, for example, that quote and book process that was just uh, shown. We have the service uh, step in the customer journey where we are telling you what's going on with your shipment, getting your track and trace, uh, giving you all the different uh, options for for uh, picking up the, the shipments, etc. And finally, we have after sales where you will get your invoice, uh, where the claim, where you can claim something about your shipment, etc. And throughout the customer journey, of course, all the customer data should be there, which will uh, interact, uh, which we use to interact with you uh, to get your list of shipments, the different bookings that you have, quotes that you made and did not materialize yet, etc. So combining those two elements, we have on the one hand, all kinds of processes from the business side, which we want to align. And on the other hand, we have the customer journey. And as I mentioned before, these processes are the ideal solution to, to, to get solved via an API. So actually what we did is throughout the customer journey, we built all kinds of APIs that help the customer in getting through that step in the customer journey. And so um, on the one hand, we use those, those, those APIs to, to, to facilitate the process. On the other hand, it also actually gives a better customer experience because we have a very easy uh, follow, uh, yeah, throughput through that customer journey and through the different processes that we have over there. So for example, the rates API, the sales API that does the quote and book process, our tracking API or service API and the claims API are the ones that are built on the cargo side. Of course, uh, it's nice to build all these things, but the next step is, of course, you should also find engagement within the customer service that you have. And so step three to fill your uh, transformation is, of course, do not engage your employees. Do not do anything to, to get them on board on this, this digital transformation. Well, how does that happen? Often in companies, there is too many, there are too many 
scattered visions, scattered strategies. No one has an idea what they're doing or they just get strange assignments from managers here and there, etc. You have to use this tool. Now you have to use this website. Hey, we build an API. Can you test this over there, etc. So to avoid that, it's very important for us also to get that one aligned vision and strategy. And especially in a crisis that we are in now, it, it, it's nice to see that up to high management, we all have these different strategies uh, lined up from a cargo domain pers pers uh, perspe perspective, cargo commercial, and within our distribution and customer service uh, domain as well. So I'm very happy to see that we are sort of aligning those roads and roadmaps towards that one goal. And also there, yeah, we have our, our customer journey. We have APIs to, to sort of underpin that customer journey and to help customers uh, throughout those uh, and that, uh, that customer journey. And we have our direct online channel where everything is self-service, but also keep in mind that big Excel sheet I've shown in the beginning. Um, the customer service itself is still a very important part within the cargo industry. And yeah? many customers still are in, uh, don't think at, at first, I have to check the website. They first think I have to call the customer service to do a booking or get my shipment details or whatever. So also there, we made sure that our uh, internal tools, our B2E uh, business to employee applications were built and based on the same APIs, based on the same processes, etc. So our cargo is actually our customer service tools and you might all know Salesforce, which we are using for our sales and account managers, where they can um, yeah, build the contracts with the big uh, customers, et cetera. So here you see that there's a, a lot of alignment. And with, with building these nice new tools, it's also very important to actually support our employees. Yeah? So, so by having our cargo as the, the employee uh, customer service tool, we can support the proactiveness of the customer service and also uh, help them in having an outstanding customer service and having a better sales uh, organization with having the right tools in place where they can easily find uh, how to help a customer and not just be reactive by waiting for a phone call, but actually call them in advance when they see something is going wrong based on the, the actions they get or whatever in their, in their tooling. So, Engaging your employees is also very important because it helps to, to, to embed the whole digital tooling and all the applications that are being built uh, in your organization. And of course, that also helps your digital transformation. Next to that, only focus on one product or just on your product itself. So for us, uh, that's also very important to see. I, mean, I, I took this background actually that we, uh, somewhere in the Middle Ages, we started to think from uh, we are the earth and we are the center of the universe. And that's also what happens in many companies. When they build one tool, one application, one website, um, that is their, the center of what they're doing. They don't mind about the customer. We have this beautiful website. And with that website, everything can, can be done. And of course, uh, as Air France KLM, it's also nice to think of that like that. But on the other hand, we are just alone there in the world. Uh, um, there are bigger planets and other planets as well. And even the sun, huh? think of that as the customer. We are actually revolving around the customer. Uh, our customers are not just booking with us. They're also booking with all, uh, all our beautiful competitors. Uh, so we have to, on the one hand, up our game, make sure that uh, our digital self-service tool, our direct uh, connection, but also the customer service and the sales are, are at their utmost best. Eh? We have customer uh, service excellence. We try to go for sales excellence. We have our beautiful direct online tooling in my cargo. We get that more and more and better and better. But next to that, we also have to think of what are the other channels that we can find our customers because it's not just uh, from the top of their head that they always will go to our website to, to find the rates, etc. So there the API becomes to play an even more important role. And so on the one hand, we have our internal toolings to get direct online and direct offline support to our customers. And of course, also to our sales and account managers. But we also have different other ways of connecting uh, to our systems and to our processes. Uh, for example, uh, with Direct Connect, where we uh, where we have our customers directly connecting to our APIs, where they will build uh, their own tooling for that. Next to that, uh, software providers. So some customers have their own uh, big um, big uh, transport management systems, and via those, those transport management systems, they can connect to our the, the transport management system will connect to our API, gets the rates, you can make the bookings over there, etc. 
different platforms. Of course, also within the cargo industry, we see some, some platformization going on. So call it the booking.coms or the sky scanners of, uh, of, of the cargo, air cargo. We have, for example, web cargo, which we connect, which is connected to our APIs. And finally, the joint venture and other interline uh, uh, agreements that we made. And also there, we made our connections with uh, with other airlines, and they are using our APIs as well. So I think there, the APIs form another important role, and that is not that we are not just focusing on our own channels, not only focusing on our own products that we are building, but also give other uh, parties the possibility to consume and and use our processes, but make that in a bigger world. Huh? So in the end, you are thinking about an ecosystem. You're not just um building one or two products you have a bigger ecosystem with different channels different process apis uh, you drive the different digital solutions that you have you try to connect different stakeholders of course that ecosystem can evolve over time we might add new channels like a chatbot or social media uh, new processes apis can be included in that ecosystem uh, we try to make it of course fit for the future but it's also a multi-directional data highway. Yeah? So everything is getting connected uh, different ways. And of course, they can influence each other. And by calling the customer service and asking for a quote, you might add, end up making the booking in, in the direct uh, direct online channel. But also using a platform to get uh, make your booking, after that, you can use our own tooling, uh, the MyCargo, for example, to do the track and trace of your shipment. And the, the goal is to guide our customers in our business processes. And we try, of course, to power all the different customer employee experiences, but also the partner experiences of these different partners that we just mentioned. And the biggest issue there, or the biggest thing we do, the, try to do there is with digital tooling, we try to solve all the known, but also unknown problems that people might get throughout the customer journey. So very important to focus on that. And finally, uh, it's the last step to fail your, uh, your digital transformation Try to ignore growth. Just leave things for that. We have some nice websites and APIs. It's good, okay like that. Let's stay like that. And of course, uh, that's something you would like to avoid. Uh, everything is interacting with each other. And when you are building something new, something else might become obsolete or more important. Uh, so it's, it's very important to look into that ecosystem that you have within your company of different channels, different processes, different applications, how they interact with each other. And all the time, take a look on how they are evolving, how they uh, they are uh, the, the echo, thinking in, a, in an ecosystem where you know that everything um, moves each other. And it's not just uh, the rain that makes things grow, it's also the, the by growing things, you also get extra rain. And that ecosystem thought is very important. And we, are, we want to make sure that when you go, when you go think of growth, that, that you go all in and that you keep raising the bar that you work on the things together, that there are different product teams, but they all know the, the, how they influence each other. And of course, you become very fast paced. Eh? You try to do things to output them in hours, days, and weeks, and not just months. And that, that whole concept of growth, but also, I think, forward ship, eh? to try to, to work today already on what you want to do next uh, and do something that you can really move forward with immediately is very important for us to see. And so digital transformation is not just we build some digital tools and we start lying in the back and uh, lying uh, in, uh, lying around and see, just see what happens. No, we are trying to, to make sure that when you start with something, you also lift off. But by lifting off, you also know that something else should come behind you. And when you are in the air, you also have to look around and see what is going on over there. Yeah, so it's very important to think of that vision and roadmap, combine that strategy with the idea where to go, how to get there, and also go when to go full throttle. And when you're going full throttle, even then, and take take a look around and, and on the one hand, of course, enjoy, but also take take into account what to do. And of course, and within Air France KLM, our current situation uh, is not too too good, and we have lots of government loans. Uh, our transformation needs to be done actually sort of mandated by the government. The cool thing for me personally, and I think for the domain I work in, is that since the COVID crisis, uh, cargo is booming, and there's lots, uh, the, the, the availability of cargo space is less because there are less planes in the air. So the price of cargo uh, shipments went up. 
combined with uh, with lots of interesting things to do, and we are we are uh, we are currently uh, very busy within our company, and we are bringing in finally quite some money still, and that's good also for our company. Um, Meanwhile, we have that that pressure from the governments, uh, both Af France and KLM get from the, respectively the French and the Dutch government quite some big loans. And so there is also pressure on us. We not only have to reorganize and, and find ways of doing things faster, uh, uh, easier and cheaper, but that transformation also gets enabled actually by all kinds of digital elements. And so that's where we are uh, currently working at. So it's for us the utmost importance to actually stick to our core values eh? and to that bigger plan and the set strategy. So that digital transformation, eh? of course, we, we try to avoid these five steps, as I mentioned them, to, to fail. And we want to make sure that we go further. So also there, and to sort of sum up and conclude this, uh, this presentation, uh, our AFKL Cargo Commercial Digital Transformation is, is, is based on, on, on five elements there, actually. the the elements try, which we try to do to actually succeed our transformation. So we try to engage our customers. We listen to them. We don't keep, uh, we don't forget about what is the business impact and the technical feasibility, but we try to engage our customers by listening to them, to doing what we think is right for them in combination with the data we get from them, the analytics we use, the insights we get out of that, of course, et cetera. Next to that, we try to empower our employees. We, may, we, we make sure that we build with digital all the enablers that are necessary for the transformation we are in. Of course, we try to optimize our processes, do things faster, easier, uh, and where they are complex, we try to sort of guide people through them with APIs, uh, with, good, uh, with good tooling, etc. Also, on a thinking way, shift from the product to the ecosystem and not just one product there's a bigger ecosystem and we try to be uh, be there for all different channels and processes that we have and finally uh, embrace that growth and forward ship uh, try to look ahead and, and and also use the innovative powers that are there in the company just to to get there so to to round off uh, for us the digital transformation is based on these five elements and of course they sound very obvious, but on the other hand, it's so easy to, to, to fall in these traps all the time, to ignore the customer, to just forget about the employees, to make the business process that you already have that are way too complex to just put them through to, to your customers, etc. So there, I, it's more of a warning. Uh, I also see my uh, in my own work that sometimes I fall for it, but I try to keep, uh, keep these five things in mind and to, to go ahead. And, and try to make sure that a digital transformation that started five years ago with just a website uh, can continue. And we can also, of course, also hopefully survive as a company, uh, thanks to all the digital enablers that, uh, that are being built uh, within the cargo teams that, uh, that we have. So to, to, to round off, actually, what did you do to succeed your uh, digital transformation? I'm happy to learn about that as well. Yeah, thank you, Stein. Thank you very much. Uh, so now it's it's time for kind of the lunch break. Uh, but uh, thank you uh, for this. So many questions can occur. One from Vince, but we can answer in the chat about uh, how do you collaborate with other airlines companies who are not your customers? Uh, you know, he talks about an airline data model. You know, how do you collaborate with that? I would have a question about was it easier as a B2C approach or B2B, you know, about being focused on the customer and APIs, right? So, so many, so many topics. Yeah. So, so what I do see yeah, from a passenger perspective, there were already quite, we already had quite an elaborate uh, ecosystem with lots of APIs and different channels. And moving to cargo, I found that, that the, the whole air cargo industry is a bit younger in, in doing that digital transformation on the one hand. Uh, and, and of course, that also has its influence, I think, on what Vince is asking, eh, on, on that collaboration with the other airlines. We, we do see all of us with the other airlines, talking about uh, the IAG, Lufthansa, etc., that there is a need for standardization. And where on the passenger side, I found out via, uh, among others, IATA and some other initiatives that, uh, that it was really hard to get processes aligned because based on the processes, all the different tooling and, 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 and digital solutions can be built. Uh, on the cargo side, we are actually setting the standards as we speak eh, that in, the, in the next few months, the past year, that there's indeed a data model, but the next step is to align these processes where 
uh, and it will also be easier for, for the, both the airlines to align with each other, but also with these new platform initiatives to, to align to those things. So I'm happy that, that things are going on on that. And there are quite some initiatives uh, that, that are being set up, actually. They're not being used, but you also see that um, where we have the APIs being consumed by different channels, uh, that, that those external parties also ask, are asking for that alignment and process because it's hard for them to, to connect to, to different companies all in different ways because everyone has its own processes. Yep. Thank you very much, Stein. Uh, uh, so now it's time for the lunch break for 30 minutes. We'll be back at 1.30. Thank you for being part of the APIs community, always insightful content, and glad to see you over the years you know, in your new API projects.